by Joseph Edery, please visit mnglobal.org, moshiachnewsglobal.org, where you find um, all the um, projects Rabbi Edery is um, currently involved in. Here is our Temple Coin um, issue. So this is extremely officially that um, the Society of the Community of the Heirs of Jacob and the Nation of Ephraim is working with the organization from Rabbi Edery. And uh, so here you will be able to find everything what Rabbi Edery is doing. And um, I welcome you now and hope that you will enjoy our first conversation, which I hope many will follow. So, hello and welcome. Today I'm sitting here with um, a rabbi, Joseph Edery. And um, hello, Joseph. So, um, I'm. Shalom, Ovracha. Yeah. So, well, this is our first recording. Uh, you, you, um, I think everybody can see um, what type of uh, nice backgrounds we have. So, um, I do have the uh, Israeli High Court of Justice in the background. So we want to talk about uh, things pertaining to the laws. And you, Joseph, you have uh, like in the background a nice setting from the rebel. And perhaps you introduce yourself and um, get started. Thank you, Ulf. Um, I'm very happy to be here with you. My, uh, my background is uh, the rebel at Efabrengen, uh, speaking words of Torah to the Hasidim in 770 Brooklyn. Probably uh, the 1990s, 1980s, late 1980s or 1990s. As you can see, uh, the Rebbe was very important to the Hasidim. And uh, the Rebbe had a lot to say to the Hasidim. And till today, the Rebbe lives on, like we say, David Melech Yisrael, Chai Vikayam. The same way the Jewish people uh, have never given up on the kingdom of King David, so too uh, the Rebbe lives on. Uh, the Rebbe is definitely a legend, a modern day legend in the Jewish world. And uh, today we're, I'm very happy to be with Ulf, and uh, me and Ulf uh, have Bahashgacha Pratit with, uh, with the help of Hashem and the divine interference. Mm -hmm. uh, we have got together um, thanks to uh, our friend Hans. And uh, his people on the nation of Ephraim and and uh, our work um, and we're collaborating in order to make this world a better place. And we're going to get into that, uh, what that means spiritually, religiously. And uh, we have a narrative that can take humanity to a great place, no matter all the turmoil and chaos you see in the world. What's special and unique about us is that we have a narrative that the world can get behind in a peaceful manner, zero bloodshed, uh, zero pain and suffering, 100% uh, life, pro, pro-life, but not in a political way, literally pro-life, like it says in the Torah, and you should choose life. Of course, you have many people today uh, that are trying to create a new way of living, which is not the way of the Torah, and the only thing they're left with is death depopulation eugenics and other things so we're just going with the basics we're going with the torah that's uh that's me yes hallelujah yeah what can i say here? so i'm um of course one of the so why are we sitting here actually together so we we said you know um uh, this is our first uh, you know get together via zoom via online to, um, to really reach a goal because um, as you said um, the world currently is a bit in turmoil. We had um, quite a number of um, yeah, current public discussions, you know, about things, uh, statements. Uh, we had here this rapper, Keen West, he said. Then um, we had Donald Trump, um, you know, saying that uh, U.S. Jews have to get their act together. So there is currently a big discussion between various uh, yeah, between various groups about, you know, what's going on actually with the Jewish people, with Jerusalem and so on. And uh, so from our perspective, we said, okay, we are, of course, obviously not Jewish, though we are from the nation of Ephraim. We claim to be from Joseph, but 
because of the Torah, we said, okay, uh, there um, has to be a way to bring really understanding between those uh, Christians in the nations and uh, those living in the land of Israel, the Jewish people, based on the Torah of Moses and the prophets of Israel. So this is where we were standing. And so, um, so I myself now go into the 22nd year of Torah reading uh, and commenting. So this is for me, it's a in the 22nd year that I, um, you know, do with whoever wishes a Torah reading cycle. So we started with Bereshit, you know, and so every time you, 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 uh, you read this. So for me, it's now um, 20, 22 years that I publish this also, that I'm going out via video or via um, books and so on. And I publish this, you know, in the non-Jewish world. And I, so we are experiencing now on the one hand, this is what I think, I, a total um, problem, problems, problems, uh, discussions and anti-Semitic statements when there is a complete lack of Torah understanding. But on the other hand, I, we see uh, like people like us, you know, coming from Germany, from, from Europe, you know, with a Christian background because of Torah, going back to the roots and uh, seeking, you know, friendship and, um, of course, cooperation and so on with the Jewish people based on the Torah. And I think this is one of the, the, the big issues where we, we have to stretch, okay, this type of setting, you know, is uh, for the future. Because uh, we said this before that uh, I think a lot of people uh, wait for the kingdom of heaven. You know, not only Jews, you said that, uh, you know, the kingdom of Judah, King David, and so on and so on. Of course, the uh, reestablishment of the Davidic dynasty. So when that finally happened, and we have um, reestablished 12 tribe kingdom of Israel, where well, that would be the kingdom of heaven reality. Would you agree to that? A hundred percent. And uh, what's special about Judaism as well is that it is a not a hundred percent spiritual abstract way to serve Hashem, but it is also tangible and physical in this world, in this reality. And there is a special memutza mechaber, a special connection, a special way that we should we should be able to integrate spirituality in the physical and we, our job the Rebbe Rashab, uh, uh, three generations ago Chabad Rebbe said that a Jew's job is to turn spirituality into physicality and to turn physicality into spirituality to nemen gashmius and machines ruchnius and to nemen ruchnius and machines gashmius and uh that's our job. And regarding, uh, I want to comment on uh, what you said about uh, Kanye West. Um, first of all, he does look like he's going through a depression or whatever, and he looks very sad. And I mean, not that any, not that everybody else is dancing around right now. The world is very unstable, so everybody's going through hard times. But I want to point out that you know it's very sad to see that he's saying these things because it's very similar to the blood libels um, uh, that happened in Europe back in the day when they would kill uh, a Jewish, uh, sorry, they would kill a Christian boy or a Christian boy would die and then they would throw the body into the Jewish guy's house and then they would try to call the police and pin the Jewish guy and say, oh, he's using the Christian boy's blood for matzos, you know, and try to create a situation. Um, of course, the blood libels eventually were debunked they were, you know, yeah. fake news, you know, and and uh, and it was clear that it was just, uh, I guess, the Christians were, I don't know, trying to blame someone else for their own issues. So I think that Kanye West saying, I have a problem with the Jewish people in general, of course, is completely out of context. And uh, it, it just means that he's, he's suffering and he's having a lot of pain. Of course, uh, all... Um, can, 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 Kanye West is dealing with Jews in Hollywood, like you said, and, and, and these kind of people. 
but 99.9% of the Jewish people are not involved in Hollywood, especially not the Orthodox community, yeah, yeah, is... especially not people like me. I don't know. I don't know what this guy is talking about. I have no clue to what Kanye West is referring to. And oh, if I want you to take over from here and tell us about, um, you know, the Jewish conspiracy in, in Hollywood, especially the secular uh, c Jewish uh, behavior in Hollywood, that that maybe is the reason why Kanye West is lashing out. Uh, yeah, what um, you know, one of the big issues, I think. Um, so first of all, you know, these um, all the type of um, anti-Semitism the Jewish people experience before the creation of the state of Israel is basically religiously based. You know, and we had this uh, to my shock. I, I told you this before. I was totally shocked that uh, right now the Jerusalem Post even reports on this that um, you know clerics from the syrian church they still now preach to their whatever you know congregation members you know that uh, the jewish people that all jewish people kill jesus you know the, uh, concerning deicide and i um, you know i thought these times are over you know it's like uh, for me who lived in jerusalem who lived in israel who's keeping now Torah coming, it's for me, it's like uh, total, absolutely shock now. Um, so you know that, so from that perspective, from that perspective, you know, that it's a huge lack of education from the Christian side, from, from the Christian side. So the Christian, the Christian pastor avoided, avoided to teach their um sheep congregation yeah um the torah you know even in the new testament it says very clearly that jesus said uh, himself that, that he didn't come to uh, you know abolish the torah but that he came to fulfill it you know and that whoever keeps it and teaches to other will be great in the kingdom of heaven so there are uh, mm -hmm. even you know um you know, told his disciples to go to the rabbis and to listen to the rabbis, not necessarily do what they do, but definitely listen to them because they are sitting on the seat of Moses. So for me, it's um, completely out of out of line when, you know, somebody, you know, like um, in Israel today, you know, is telling that the Jew, the Jewish people kill Jesus. For me, it's like totally, absolutely uncomprehensible. No. And Ulf, this is, uh, you, you spoke about this as well. I think this is a very important point that maybe back in the day, this is something that specifically after, uh, you know, speaking with you and, and being involved in your organization, I started to put the dots together, which is that maybe back in the day, if some group of people were on a mountaintop somewhere very far away um, and they kept Christianity instead of being atheists, then it's an upgrade for them. But today, with so much information in the world, uh, Christianity has become a hindrance, uh, a block Absolutely. for the truth seeker. And the truth seeker is trying to find Hashem. He's trying to find the Torah. And he's trying to find the people of Israel. And Christianity blocks him from reaching the Torah with the New Testament. They block him from reaching Hashem with idol worship, like we know that in the church they have a literal idol, you know, of of a human being, which is not God, and and with the narrative that Jesus was killed by Jews, uh, Christianity creates real time anti-Semitism, and so now instead of reaching Hashem, the Bible and the Torah, they're involved in the New Testament and idol worship, and they despise and maybe even kill the Jewish people which is the saddest thing. So as of now, today, Christianity is the biggest uh, hindrance to the truth. And I want to also point out that I'm watching now on YouTube, I'm seeing a bunch of videos of Christians that, and American Christians, you know, they, they have a channel and they put out a video and they get 100,000 views in a second. And the only thing they're saying there is, oh, there's another rabbi in Israel that might be the Mashiach pay attention for the Antichrist, it's coming, it's coming, you know, but the yes. Antichrist is not in Israel, the Antichrist is in Rome, his name is the Pope, yeah, exactly. and he's the Antichrist. Absolutely, 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 
um, this is this is a major issue. <laughs> this is a major issue. The the search for the antichrist. I I took a look at this. Um, um, we had this in our Zoom call, so we have regular um, Zoom calls every week. And I think last week we pulled this out, where uh, some Christian guy um, showed the water ceremony from Sukkot. You know where the uh, where the priests, the Levites, you know, in full dresses, they put the water and so on and so on. And instead of you know reporting how historical this was. How unique this is that after 2000 years, destruction, persecution, and so on and so on, forceful conversion, you know, you're finally, you come to Jerusalem, um, you know, as God has promised, then you do the mitzvot, you do the mitzvot, because you can do now the mitzvot. And then some Christian says, oh my gosh, this is like the worst thing ever. And now the Jews are basically, sorry to say, too stupid. They will not able to recognize their own Moshiach because they rejected Jesus. And then they are fell for the Antichrist. It's like <laughs> one of the biggest obstacles. And I had this discussion with uh, several guys, you know, and it's, um, it's uh, quite severe. It's, it's extremely quite severe. So one of the major issues, I think, what the reason is, you know, is indeed the pictures. You know, we, we are talking about the motion picture industry. Um, like in Hollywood, and um, so we have on the one side, we have these prophetic pictures, as well in the, uh, of course, in the Tenach, uh, you know, with, within the prophets, you know, when we are, for example, Daniel 7, Daniel 7, when we're talking about the beasts, so the prophets, they saw beasts, and now the issue is, when did you see these beasts described in the Bible? Like in real life, never ever, yeah. So, I th I think that um, the the Christian people there's an issue with tribalism, and like they want to show that we're better than the Jews, not because they want to actually, not because they actually know what they're talking about, and not because they find they're 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 now working. Uh, you know, on on the search for truth, you know, uh, and uh, but but rather they're they're just um, we're Christians, you know. The Antichrist is coming. Whatever well, happens know, to the Jewish not, people um, is I, irrelevant. I, mean, I don't think that it's uh, it's not that they think they are really honestly concerned. They are really honestly concerned. Trust me. Yeah. But yeah, I know, so I know. But I'm saying that if they would be focused more on actually understanding the Torah. Like you said, a lack of education. So if they would know that the way to serve Hashem is by doing the mitzvahs, and every time a Jew does a mitzvah, he is fulfilling the kingdom of Hashem in this world. The way that Hashem is king of this world, just like a king. How is a king a king? The more people pay taxes, the more people listen to the laws of the king, the more that king is legitimate and the more that king is a real king in the world. The more that the Jewish people fulfill mitzvahs and the Torah in the land of Israel, the more scholars and rabbis and potential Mashiachs, uh, rabbis on the level that people are already saying, maybe this rabbi is Mashiach, the more of those that there are, the more the Jewish people are fulfilling Hashem's commandments in Israel, and the more the kingdom of heaven is not just something that you're going to die and you're going to experience. It's something real in this world. And if the Christians would be able to get over themselves, especially in, in America, just the tribalism, the tribalism, we're Christians, we're better. Whatever the Jews do, we're better. Okay, fine, you're better. No one's fighting with you about your little community. No one's trying. No, no Jew ever is, goes to a Christian and says, I want to convert you to Judaism. Judaism actually pushes people away. If someone finds Judaism and tries to convert, he's going to have a very hard time <laughs> uh, because we're not trying to convert anybody. It's a very, you know, it's a very, uh, we're just Big trying process. to stay. Yeah, it's a very hard process. And, and with the, the amount of anti-Semitism and other things, it's not even recommended very much, not even by the Jewish people. Yeah. So it's very hard. There's 613 laws to fulfill eventually. So it's really taking upon yourself a lot of responsibility when you decide to become a Jew. 
and uh, on top of everything else that's going on, you know. So when these people, these Christians, if they would really forget about their tribal community of Christians and look for the truth a little bit more, allow the nation of the Jewish people to teach them and to 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 give them a little bit more of the Torah, then they would uh, calm down and. Uh, you know um, the the big issue, and this is why um, I, um, you know, I started um, Ephraim and the organization, and so on and so on. Okay, um, the the whole uh, thing what you just described, you know, if they would just do, they don't let it because they believe they believe through the death of Jesus, you know, now they are free from all the mitzvot. And when they do the mitzvot, they believe that they would, um, you know, reject Jesus. So this is uh, the whole core issue. It's like totally messed up. Okay. Ah. Now, uh, so one of the big issue what, what um, where I ran into trouble is because I said, okay, I'm from Ephraim, from Joseph, and because um, I belong to the holy people, I belong to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have to keep the Torah. This is the reason. So this is the same reason why the Jewish people say, okay, we are from the ancient Israelite. We were standing at Mount Sinai and there God made a covenant with us. And since then we are in it and there is no way out. Okay. So this is the whole reason why, you know, currently the move that you made, like the difference between the Jewish people and the Noahites, which say, okay, you just need to have your seven. But we, as people, as ancient people who are standing with Moshe Rabbeinu at Mount Sinai, where we have to keep the 630. Okay? Now, when we go... I want to say, one second, Ulf, I want to say that in, in a case that, let's say, the father is Jewish and the mother is not Jewish, just for example, um, or in a case where we know that somebody has Jewish blood, then it's a mitzvah to help them to convert. That is also true. So uh, that means that if you find that the Germanic tribes, um, there's a, there's a, or if you find that the, the, the Germanic tribes or your ancestors have Jewish blood, so it's possible that the Jews have a mitzvah to try and help you to convert to Judaism. I'm just saying. Now, of course, you're a very smart guy. You're a very intellectual guy. And uh, as, as opposed to other Christians, which their whole life, they grew up in America next to McDonald's, you um, took the liberty and took the time to come to Jerusalem and you ran around with a shofar and, and you built yourself a sukkah. And I'm sure you did many other uh, mitzvahs and you tried your best to connect to the Torah and to the, and to the way of the Torah. And you spent uh, years and years in Jerusalem, in Eretz Israel, in the Holy Land. And uh, you've seen um, up front, you've seen what the Jewish people are busy doing, how they behave, what the mitzvahs are all about, what the Torah is all about. And like you told me, you started off um, in a Christian uh, organization and slowly, slowly you started to write articles that were more Torah-based, more, more uh, Jewish reality-based, to the point where they said, you know what, you, you, you sound like a Jew. You know, forget about it. Uh, we're, we're throwing you out or whatever it was. And, and at that point, you had no choice but to continue going with your truth, which is the, the, the source of Christianity, the source of Islam, which is Judaism, which is truly um, the source of it all. And of course, like we said earlier, at this point in history, when there's so much information out there, Christianity is, uh, I mean, as a social structure, I guess it's good, you know, but uh, as a religious structure, you might as well. And, you know, it's very sad that you say that the more mitzvahs a uh, Christian does, the more he feels he's going away from Jesus. Because imagine Jesus today, and he says, my followers are not even... Uh, they're not even trying not to kill and not to steal because if they don't kill and they don't steal, they don't believe in my sacrifice or some BS like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So imagine his Christian followers are killing and stealing. And then you have a creation of the military industrial complex where America is actively trying to kill people 
and come up with reasons and, and, and all kinds of stuff. So you now have a system, a righteous indignation, you might say, where you have people running away completely in the opposite direction of the most basic mitzvahs, the Ten Commandments, the, the Seven Laws of Noah, do not kill and do not steal. People scared of fulfilling those mitzvahs because then maybe their sacrifice in Jesus is not going to work. Now, I have news for all these Christians. Jesus is not going to save you. <clears throat> you better stop killing and you better stop stealing and you better respect the family life and you better establish courts of justice. And if there is a Jesus that's going to save you, he's going to save you by throwing you straight into the pits of hell for eternity. Your worst nightmare. And he is the... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. There's okay. no. Specific. We can work this out, uh, uh, Joseph. We can definitely work this out. I told you, you know, the head of the organization, you know, is the president of the International Christian Embassy. So it's the largest uh, Christian Zionist organization. And of course, these open issues I put out for seven years, of course, they will be closed one day. Definitely. Uh, because the, um, you know, the, you have. What can I say? You know, within Christianity, leave it in this way. Uh, you know, we have, of course, Roman Catholic, uh, ca uh, Catholics, which are like the, um, the the standard. You know, the gold standard of Christianity. You know, from a Jewish perspective, it, it's Edom, but they are the ones who actually um, define what you have to believe. Now, the Roman Catholic Church, they made a peace agreement with the Jewish people in Nostra Atata during the Second Vatican Council, already 1965. So nothing is going there. So the Protestants, Lutherans, are accepting that, accepted that. They stopped the Reformation. Now, though... So uh, good that we're back together. We had like a little uh, interruption where we were saying, ah, you know, Catholics and uh, Catholics and evangelicals and so on. So. so they basically made like um, peace, uh, peace, uh, some sort of, you know, um, peace agreement. So there, there is no missionizing going on, nothing. The Pope was very helpful and so on and so on. So who are not under this peace agreement are the um, what currently is out there, the Christian Zionists and evangelicals. And one of the uh, very interesting things here, um, Josef, what I found out, you know, so all the, um, the liberal, all the liberal ideas in Judaism, well, they came out of Germany. You know, you have like uh, socialism, Karl Marx is a converted uh, Jewish guy to Christianity and so on. So many of the socialist uh, revolutionaries were Jewish. Okay. And they, the, the basically the ideological um, start was in Germany. So in Germany, you have conservative Judaism comes out and liberal Judaism comes out. Then, of course, we have the, some famous banker families coming out of Germany. Um, who were very successful with then also setting up the Federal Reserve Bank in New York and so on. And so there was some, uh, so the Jewish German guys are involved quite uh, some time. Now, at the same time where you had the rise of conservative and liberal Judaism, you had the rise of evangelicals. So you really have to think about this, you know, you had like Orthodox Judaism, like extremely Orthodox Judaism and Roman Catholicism as like the two most opposing streams of religion concerning whatever happens in the Bible. You know, and then slowly, slowly via different reformations, you know, you had conservatives and then you had uh, uh, Lutherans, Protestants. And so today, they meet of yes we are basically christians and jews but we do not follow the teachings of moses and jesus anymore but of karl marx sigmund freud karl popper max horkheimer the frank you know political correctness frankfurt school and so on and so on and so on so they exchange slowly slowly you know the true text the true teachers the true teachings and converted and perverted it you know, with help, of course, you know, um, Hollywood has a big part in it. 
Hollywood has a big part. So yeah, why don't you why don't you talk more about why do you think Kanye West had his or ye like they call it, whatever? Uh, why do you think? <laughs> uh, you know, he doesn't want to take up too many brain cells of the stupid people that follow him, so he has to give it a very short name. You know, ye. So it does. <laughs> But uh, so why do you think such a, such a, why do you think, okay, so, okay, so I you're think... saying that the Hollywood is mixed out of Jews that have left Judaism and Christians that have left Christianity. In other words, the worst of the worst from both of the communities is who Kanye West, first of all, he's also pretty messed up himself. He talks about prayer and he talks about other things. But he acts like a complete pagan and a complete devil worshiper in everything that he does. It doesn't make sense what he said. I, I, I took a look what he said. It doesn't make sense what he says because he's mixing. So uh, where it makes sense is really uh, what Donald Trump says, okay? Because he makes a differentiation between U.S. Jews and people of Jewish faith. And there is a big difference. And of Israel. Okay, while as you know, G, okay, he's, um, I mean, like totally uh, BSing, okay, to say that. Now, but he is going along uh, something, you know, uh, which is already discussing. I mean, the whole issue with the black Hebrews, you know, where black people say that we are the real Jews. Now, this is an issue not only with Key West, apparently, but this is an issue here uh, we had also in Germany with our one of our main German singers here, with Xavier Naidu, okay, who has been in the anti-Semitism report from the World Jewish Congress for, you know, basically uh, exchanging, telling, hey, these are not the real Jews. You know, these are not the real Jews. You know, the uh, Chabad Lubavitch, of course, is in the very, very high position of being a very bad end time cult and so on and so on. Um, and then they're saying, OK, no, we uh, the, the, the black population, the, um, you know, Xavier Naidu said the um, Negro sl slaves, the U.S. Negro slaves, they are the real Jews. So this is a big issue. I mean, seriously, you know, it's where well you say, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. So you don't even right. want to There's a lot of, so there's this a lot of mix up in it. Yeah. This is why it was so important for us, you know, to say, to, um, you know, to name us Nation of Ephraim and Ephraim, because um, this is the only possibility to get through all these different namings. You know, we have a big issue that. Israel and the Jewish people are synonymous, synonymously used in the discussion, you know, but the Torah makes a distinction. There is on the one side, there is Israel. And on the other hand, there are the Jewish people. So you have the people of Israel and you have the people of Judah. So this is the, the biblical issue. So the people of Judah, well, they went to Babylon and so on and so on. So we know the story up till today. Very clear history of the last 3,000 years since uh, King David. But then you had the people of Israel, you know, from Ephraim. Well, Ephraim also had a clear um, history over the last thousand. He got like a bit uh, stupid, you know. He got like, uh, you know, infested with idols and lost his identity. So the whole issues of the tribes of the, you know, which is essential for the reestablishment of a 12th tribe kingdom, where we need tribes, you know. And because this topic is taken out of the discussions in churches and in synagogues, it's completely forgotten. You have this big mix up, mix up that nobody knows really, okay, a Christian, okay, what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean to be a Jew? Who is a Jew? Okay. But today, we have the big issue, okay, who is Israel? Who is Israel? And who belongs to Israel? Is a Jew automatically part of Israel? Yeah, especially, and this is Sanhedrin even, uh, you know, uh, last two years ago made uh, some sort of a ruling on this, you know? So also, I want to I wanna speak to that because there's two things I want to say. Number one, uh, me growing up as a Jewish kid, in yeshiva and everything so when we when we called ourselves yidin 
Yidin. Uh, Yidin doesn't even mean Jewish. It just means Yidin. Yidin is Yid, is a Jew, I guess. But it's not from the a Id or a Yid is not necessarily later in English you would call it a Jew and then Jewish and then people would associate Jewish with Judah. But I'm not even sure that Id has anything to do or a Yid has anything to do with Judah. Today, the word Jewish sounds like Judah, so they think that it's from there. But that's besides the point. Me growing up as a kid, um, we we know that uh, in Mordechai, in the story of Esther, he's Ish Yehudi, Haya B'Shushan Habira, and everybody knew that Mordechai was from the nation of Ephraim, from the nation, from the tribe of, <laughs> from the tribe of Ephraim, not from Ephraim, uh, again, from Binyamin. <laughs> he's from the tribe of Binyamin, and they called him Ish Yehudi because he had a lot of guts to, to stand and not bow in front of Haman, which had an idol on his neck. That's the story of Esther. So because he had Misirut Nefesh, self-sacrifice, like a lion, so they said, oh, Ish Yehudi, not necessarily because he was from that tribe, but that's what the nickname for the Jews that had self-sacrifice was Yehudi. Going back, we know that Yehuda, the son of Jacob, the only reason he had this power of self-sacrifice and the reason why the rest of the brothers looked up to him as the king, what, where did he get it from? He got it from his grandfather, Avraham, which was ready to do the ultimate sacrifice, to, to sacrifice his son, Isaac, um, which, uh, which eventually Hashem told him, don't do it. And of course, we know that he sacrificed the goat instead. So um, that is where Judah got his self-sacrifice or where Judah got his Judah from. So retroactively speaking, that's why we call Avraham Avinu in a Jew, not because he's from Judah, which is his grandson, but retroactively speaking, um, that's self-sacrifice is what symbolizes the Jew. And today, most Jews, as we've seen in history, were ready to lay down their life for the Torah, for the mitzvahs. In the story of Purim, the entire nation of Israel, the entire, the entire Jewish people, what you would call today, was, was under threat of annihilation. And if they would have converted or denounced the fact that they're Jewish, they would not be under that decree. And none of them were ready to do that. Not one Jew was debating if he should convert or denounce his Judaism or his Hebrewism or whatever you want to call it. Um, as far as the exile and as far as the tribes, of course, uh, in, in the Shabbat prayer, we say, because of our sins, we were exiled from our land. And uh, we we have been distanced from our from our Adama from Admatenu from our from our soil, and we cannot serve in the temple and do our duties of sacrificing the the karbanot the you know the, the worship in the temple and so on and so forth. Of course, uh, okay. So so going back to the Jewish concept, of course, there's been and and also I want to say another thing, Avraham Avinu. Um, taught Judaism pretty much, or whatever you want to call it, the, the service of one God and so on. He taught it to his ten So Avraham Avinu taught the Torah to everyone that came to his tent, and many non-Jews um, spread the word basically about one God and about all these things. And technically they weren't even Jews. They weren't even family. They just sat down and ate a meal by him. So this, the, the, what you, what you're starting to realize is, is that also from a, from a advertising perspective, Judaism was spread 
by the Jewish people. And also you see um, after the second temple destruction and after the first temple destruction, the fact that the Jewish people went all over the world, that also inevitably spread the wisdom of Judaism so much so that the Romans pretty much took about took Christianity, which is a knockoff, a Chinese version of Judaism, made in China version of Judaism, uh, and they made it theirs. So you see that um, there is this push of Judaism also from a genetic, like fat Jewish people that got lost in exile, and also from a intellectual place throughout the generations. Now the um, whole issue concerning the, uh, you know, the tribes and what happened to the Jewish people, you know, I read up a bit on this, because according to international law, if you are people, then you have the right of self-determination. All right, so the state of Israel, this is why they have now this national state law, very important for them to say, yeah, well, Yes, Israel is a Jewish and a democratic state, you know, and uh, so now the the um, the issue of to be a Jew, according to the international law, is a matter of descent, you know, and this is the Jewish people. Now, the, the big issue is, of course, that at all times, and we know this since Ruth the Moabite, okay, that somebody from outside can convert to yeah, and this is what you call today Judaism, but the Judaism of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was a bit different of today rabbinical Judaism. You know, uh, stay on that point that we in, in Judaism, in, in the Torah, in the oral tradition, and in the written tradition, um, we know that the Avot, the fathers, they practiced what today we call the mitzvot. Now, they didn't do it in the same way we do it today. For example, it says Yaakov Avinu, when he was working for 20 some years for Lavan, and he and Lavan was trying to swindle him out of paying him for 20 years of working. And he he worked. Uh, Lavan didn't lose even one sheep. He worked yep. as a shepherd for him. And he and, and he didn't lose one sheep for the 20 years that he was working for him. And when it came time to pay, he was trying to smuggle his way out from paying him. So one, one, one even second. all the way back, Josef here. Yeah, okay, uh, Hannes is leaving. Hannes is leaving. Um, so we, we sagt doch mal für kurz auf Wiedersehen, oder? Kurz auf Wiedersehen sagen. Okay, so 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 at the time, um, Lavan told Yaakov, he told him, "I will pay you with all the black sheep mm -hmm. that are born the next season. They will be yours." So Yaakov, what did he do? he knew that the female goats and the female sheep, they will, they, when they're at the water, at the well. They made. Okay, <laughs> they I, made. I, uh, you know, I, 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 wrote, I wrote a book on this, The Dream of Jacob. You know so, that these... So Yaakov, with these sticks, he was able to do by, by fixing the fact that Lavan was trying to cheat him. The same thing that we're talking about today with the Sanhedrin is bringing justice to the world. At the end of the day, the din, the tzedek, and the yosher is what Hashem is trying to bring to this world: truth and justice and righteousness. So Yaakov Avinu was able to do what today a Jewish people needs to put on tefillin and to pray. He was able to do that with the sticks with Lavan, but the holiness went back to heaven because. The second he finished doing the deed of justice, um, there was no holiness stayed in this world. After Mount Sinai, the holiness stays in the Torah, in the physical siddur, the prayer books, in the tefillin, in all the, the shofar. The holiness is in the actual physical world. That's the difference between before the giving of the Torah and after the giving of the Torah. Now, to of course... Uh, today, when we uh, drive to shul, there's holiness in the car because the car is being used to do a mitzvah. And of course, Avraham Avinu didn't have a car. He had a donkey. And of course, um, there are certain things that are different about the way and we serve Hashem today. But if we have to look at the general vision and the general 
matara, the general mission that Yiddishkeit is trying to do in this world, I would have to say that Judaism is very uh, in line. They found tefillin, a pair of tefillin from Bar Kokhva, which is 2,000 years ago. Yeah. And it's 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 almost the same as, as what we have today. And the same thing is if you go at all the communities of the Jews um, in exile and they all come back, it's the same square box tefillin. It's the same lulav. It's the same etrog. It's the and same there is shofar. no doubt about uh, Joseph. There is no doubt about this. I, I mean, I'm, um, you know, as I said, you know, I do this now. Uh, this is my 22nd year um, publicly doing the Torah. Uh, 96, I moved to Israel. So this is now uh, 26 uh, years. I'm like uh, deeply interconnected. And this is what I said that the Jewish people, they maintain their identity. They maintain their identity. So this is why, you know, after they went to Babylon, Ezra and Nehemiah came back. And then, you know, uh, I, you know, then the Prusim were started, basically. This is when the codification of Jewish law after the destruction of the first temple started where they started to make the Eruv around, you know, around the Torah about a certain mitzvot, you know, to make it more secure and so on and so on. So this is, this is definitely for 100%, this is what I meant. So the, the nation of Judah, Judah, they maintained their identity. And they were called Jewish at one time because they were coming out of the uh, area of Judea. This is where they're living. And there was, of course, no difference uh, there was no tribal distinction anymore. There was no tribal distinction. Right, right. And that's another thing we have to say, that in the desert, Moshe Rabbeinu finally gave permission to all the tribes to intermarry. Okay? So what this means is, is that in the, in the desert already, with Moses, the, the tribes were allowed to start to marry each other. So by the time Yeshua enters the land of Israel and divides the land by the tribes, things are already starting to become, um, you know, a little discombobulated when it comes to the actual division of every tribe, because now you have people. So, of course, there's a few rules, like, let's say that the, the tribes uh, goes by your father. And if you're Jewish, goes by your mother. So at least there was still so they said, okay, it doesn't matter who your mother is, who is your father, from which tribe is your father. So there was still a way to maintain order. But eventually, especially after exile, when they lost track of who is who and which tribe they're from, um, just like today, you the, the Arabs, they call themselves Palestinians because the place was called Palestine before. So now you're going to call all the Jews Jew, Jews because they came from Judea. It's just not enough information. And, and I would say that it, just the same way uh, Palestine was a British mandate. And, and under the British mandate, you had many Jews living in Israel. You had thousands and thousands of Jews. They that are, are Palestinians. Palestinians. Exactly. They're, they're Palestinians. Right. You had Muslims. You had Christians. And, and Jews, all Palestinians, if you might say so. And uh, today, the word has become synonymous with, with, with a mess. And, and I will say the same thing is that to, to, to say the same way, if I would want to say that all the German people are from the Germanic tribes are in Germany right now, and I would not um, take the time to be careful and say, well, you know, what kind of groups are actually living in Germany right now? Germany is just a piece of on the map. You know, it's just a house or whatever. Right. The same thing is to say that the reason the Jewish people are called Jewish is because they come. OK, let's say they let's say they're called Jews because they come from Judea. The only tribe in Judea was was Judah. No, there was Levites. There was Kohanim. There was this, there was... So, you know, we have to be careful when we when we do that. And I know for. A lot of times, Americans especially, they're looking for one answer, quick fix, bye bye, you know, lock it in and bye bye. Yeah, oh, is, there is, you cannot do this. You can, this is absolutely you cannot, you cannot do this. Not with this topic. It's too delicate. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this is how, what I said. You know, this this opposing issue. You know, um, 
I think it's second king. In second kings, I think there it's the first time that it's the uh, expression Yehudi shows up, you know. And today, of course, it's you know, and this is sort of the 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 problem today is because you can go through a conversion process, because you can go through a conversion and you can become a Jew. Okay. So um, so then it's a big question, okay, is it is it a physical issue? So is it, you know, when I'm Jewish, okay, I'm allowed to go to Israel and receive immediately regardless where I am. <clears throat> I'm Jewish, I have immediately the right of return and I can go to Israel and can to Dathiud. Okay. Now if you want to convert, of course, then you become a part of, of Judah. Now, while this is all going, the whole issue of guys like me and uh, like coming from Joseph, claiming to be from Joseph or from Ephraim, is at the same time going on. They also claim. And now we are coming to the whole issue. Okay, so when we are um, taking a look at People, they say, okay, we have a national state law because to be Jewish, well, this is a physical issue, you know, because you're Jewish because your mother is Jewish and so on. It's a physical issue. It's, a, it's an issue of descent. This is the reason why the international law guarantees the, uh, self de the right of self-determination of the people, of, of the Jewish people. So this is um, international law like within the UN member states. Now, all people have now freedom of religion. Freedom of religion, it's another catchphrase, you know, a freedom of religion that everybody should act according to his understanding freely of oppression and so on and so on and so on. Now, within this freedom of religion is, of course, people like me say, okay, I'm leaving Christianity, I'm leaving Christianity, I'm moving to Israel, and I'm changing my opinion. I'm changing my religion. So this is one of the major free freedom issues that you can change your religion, that you can ch stay, uh, change your citizenship, and that you can change your place where you live. This is all um, in the human rights issues. Okay, and now we have this um, the the whole issue with the, the Torah. You know that in the moment somebody converts. Well, he has to keep the Torah. And when he keeps the Torah, well, then he becomes Jewish. No? So now what is with all our guys currently, you know, who are saying, okay, we are not Jewish. We are not Jewish. But, and we, you know, even when we go through a conversion process, we will, we will not become Jew. We are from Joseph. We are from Joseph. We are from the other side. So now you, um, the, uh, the, there are various scholars all over the place. Of course, even Rambam, I mean, see, you know, were looking all, all at all times, okay, where did the so-called lost tribes go? And next to the house of Judah, okay, the house of Israel is the second entity. And what I absolutely believe is that it comes out of the two wives from Jacob, where we have, where you had, to, from the beginning, you had two camps, two camps. The, the the Rachel camp and the Leah camp, you know, and when Jacob had his fight at the river of Yabok, you know, with the angel, and he was transformed into Israel, well, then he, beforehand, he sent, you know, he sent these camps to Esau, to Esau, you know, into the arms of Esau, and um, in a way, so, this is, in a way, so how the Geula, in a way, also processes. That means Jacob Israel stays behind in the Geula, and now he starts sending, you know, his groups into Jerusalem, into Israel, into Israel. You know what I'm getting? So first, he sends the well, wives. Then Yaakov, sends... In, the, in the story of the angel, he, his camp was parked. And he went back to get some stuff that he forgot on the other side of the river. Rashi says, Pachim Ktanim, small jugs. And then Rashi says, but Yaakov was a very rich guy. Why would he have to go back to the other side of the river just to get some jugs? And uh, so, so Rashi says that it's because at Sadiq, he doesn't steal, he doesn't kill, he doesn't, you know, so everything that he has is very, very precious to him. He worked very, very hard 
to get it in Bederach Hayashar, in a holy way. So even if he had a few jugs for him, it was a very big deal. So he went all the way back in the middle of the night to go get it. And then it says he fought with Esau's angel. Now Esau's angel is like every person has an angel that represents him in heaven. And Esau was able to, I guess, I'm not sure how it went, but the point is Esau's angel was able to become physical in this world and fight with Yaakov, and he was not able to harm him. He was only able to hit him on his thigh, um, and uh, and then he wanted him to dismiss him. He wanted him to go back. He said, "You know, you uh, you won you won over me. Um, let me go back. Let me go back to heaven to to do my prayers to serve Hashem. Now that I've tried to fight you and I cannot, um, and you you should be called Yisrael Kisarita Elokim because you fought with a with a minister of Hashem with an angel. That's what your name should be. Um, and eventually he he let him go." But uh, now, when he sent his, we, we know about Rachel and Leah. If we're going to talk about them in this context, we know that Yosef stood in front of his mother, Rachel, in order that Esau should not see her. Because he did not want Esau's Ein Hara, his evil eye, to see his mother. And he knew that Esau would want to marry her or something, and he did not want his mother. Um, and for this, he was blessed. With with Aleshor, rise uh, of the of the bull of the this is the blessing of ya of Yosef that he that Ain Hara should never uh, attach to him, and uh, but Yaakov was punished for not giving Esav his daughter Dina as a wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know the whole story. Now the the issue is really how are we able? You know, I mean. To, to see and to bring this reconciliation to the family. You know, it's obviously, okay, even with all the bad stuff with Esav, okay, he was raised as a king. He has his own kingdom, and we can see this up uh, in the Roman world up uh, to this day. So, but and then, of course, we have all the blessings of Jacob over the tribes, you know, while I even don't see them as a blessing, you know, they are actually a prophetic word. The blessing went to Ephraim. And then, you know, in chapter 49, Genesis, so Jacob, you know, speaks what happens to the tribes in a future day at some, some point in the distant past, where I believe this is today. Yeah. And so in all these years, you know, when um, taking a look at scripture, you know, God makes always a clear distinction between Israel and, you know, and Joseph. And I mean, it's always a very, very clear distinction. This distinction today, I think, is not done anymore. So it's much too generalized. It's much too generalized that you speak about the Jews or the Christians. And in a, in a way, there is no such thing as the Jews because we are and the Christians because we see that through their individual actions, okay, we have, you know, some left Torah, some, uh, you know, immersed in Torah, some went to Israel, um, some do not want to have anything to do with Israel. So we see that Jews and Christians are divided on the same issues. But when we go back into the Torah, into the scripture, we see that there is a family story, you know, with, uh, you know, two wives and, you know, two second wives, you know, 12 tribes and, you know, Joseph who was sold. And this story has to be solved. Now, when we go into the prophetic um, chapter, of the, chapter of the resurrection of the dead in Ezekiel, okay, now, there are also these two different distinct groups coming out, out of the graves. So it's on the one side is Judah and all the people associated, the Israelites associated with him. So I believe that these are the people who are coming out of the nations and follow Judah in the way of Torah, converting, you know, I know a lot of people who converted to Judaism in order to, you know, come to the land, stay in the land and to fulfill their destiny. So this is the one group, the ones who are, you know, 
attaching themselves to the Jewish people and their Torah. And then it says there is a Joseph, the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim and all the Israelites associated with them. So these are a completely second group with a complete different set of history. With a complete well, well, I want to speak to the, uh, to, the, to the time when there was a... Uh, what happened was that at a certain point you had Israel... The land of Israel was divided into two. You had the kingdom of Judah and you had the kingdom of Israel. And there was a time when a king from Israel, like you say, was from the, from the, from the tribe of Ephraim. And he forced the Jewish people to worship. I don't know, forced, like the same way they forced everyone to get a vaccine. Not everyone, of course, but he made it a law that everybody should worship idols. And they for 20 some years, um people were worshiping these idols that he put uh i think jeroboam you mean jeroboam who put yeah. up the altar and so on i know and he was basically the first anti-semite if you think about this you know he put up signs do not buy from jews you know and do not go yeah, down yeah. to he jerusalem stopped, and he so on and so on going, he stopped people from going to the temple but what's interesting to know is that sometimes the, the the king in Judah was secular, and the king in the tribe of the land of Israel was religious. So it wasn't always that the kingdom of Israel was secular and the kingdom of Judah was religious. Sometimes the kingdom of Judah was secular and the kingdom of Israel was religious. It depended really on the king and if he was a tzaddik or if he was a rasha, uh, if he was righteous, or if he was an evildoer. So, um, but, 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 but besides all of that, it's almost like right now, um, the, the Jewish people have a, a mitzvah to, just like I would assume every country today has something similar, vaguely, to allow refugees or whatever it is. And, and, and also, Oh, I think that the, the real question, because we're talking now about basically, I, if I have to gather what you're saying, the real question is um, those people who are allies to the Jewish people who suffer anti-Semitism from their neighbors, just like the Jewish people, what is their uh, din? What is the din? What is the case as far as the Zionist government right now is concerned in the land of Israel? Because they're su like the same reason why the Jews in Europe were suffering from anti-Semitism. That's the reason why the state wa was built in the first place. Yeah. So if there's B'nai Noach that are suffering or Noahites or non-Jews, but they're allies with the Jewish people um, and they're suffering from anti-Semitism and persecution, shouldn't they also be under the umbrella of being able to seek asylum in the state of Israel? And that's a question for the secular uh, courts uh, in Israel. And as far as the religious um, answer to that, I can, I can speak to that a little bit more because that's where uh, I, I, I study more. Um, uh, we know that on Shabbat, for example, a Jew has to rest. His animals need to rest. Uh, anybody in his household needs to rest. And anybody, hagar hagar betocham. And the Ger, like you said, the Germán or the yeah, the Ger, <laughs> yeah. So the Ger, which means the 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 fremde, the fremde, the you know the foreigner, the foreigners which live between you, they also get to rest on Shabbat, and this is the concept of Ger Toshav, which is a non-Jew in Israel has a mitzvah to keep Shabbat to a certain extent in Israel. Whereas in, if, if a non-Jew is outside Israel, he does not need to keep Shabbat and he should not keep Shabbat. So there's different laws. But the point is, is that in Judaism, we have a, a, a mitzvah to, to look out for anyone that's seeking asylum. Okay. And, that, and, and, in, and in the Torah, it says, uh, to the foreigner, to the yatom, which is the orphan, la'almana, to the widow. So the Jewish people have a, a mitzvah to, to act charitable, not only to 
those within their community, but also those in the general community. I also want to say that uh, the flamingo, the, the, the flamingo bird, the pink bird that stands on one yeah. foot, the flamingo is called in Hebrew a chasida. A chasida is she acts in kindness. And the question is, if she's a chasida, then why is she not kosher? Why is the flamingo not kosher? And the answer is because she only does chesed with her own species. So she doesn't do chesed with other birds or with other species. She's only good to her community. So that's why she's not kosher, which brings us to the second point that it's obvious that a Jew needs to exhibit chesed, kindness, not only to the people in his own community, but also to the global community. And when I say community, I don't mean different Jewish communities. I mean the world. The communities. And again, like I wanted to speak. Okay, so as we were saying, um, what were we saying again? Ugh. What were we saying? Okay, I'm out of because of uh -huh. the interruptions, because of the interruptions, and um, so while we were um, while we were you know reconnecting here, I received uh, a message from uh, Rabbi Feld, Jerusalem. So um, he was pointing out this whole um, returning to Sinai, a prophetic call for climate justice. Did you hear about this? No. Okay. So in November, I think 9 to 12 November or something like this. So there will be the next um, climate, uh, climate conference. So the last one was in Glasgow or whatever. And now you have um, COP27, which is a climate conference in Sinai. And um, there is the Elijah Institute which is run by Alon Goshen, a rabbi Alon Goshen Gottstein. So he already for the last 20 years or whatever, you know, is like in his has his interfaith dialogue. And so they have now at Mount Sinai, they have now this conference where they are, instead of talking about Torah, you know, they want to make like this full climate change religion, perfect, you know, including, of course, you know, all the, uh, the Jewish participants. Yeah, yeah. This, this. Oh, so we were talking. This is. They're not going to be successful, hopefully. And uh... um, I think we should uh, do something about it because the guy who is um, organizing is is um, Rabbi Alon Goshen Gottstein. So he sits in Jerusalem. So and he called me when the Pope came and asked uh, me to do the website for the Pope's visit. So that's. Um, so he is going now to sign up. And the so uh, yeah, let's, let's see. Yeah, if we if if uh, if we can go visit him together, that would be great. Sure. Yeah. So and, the um, in 2015, their group they went together with uh, Rabbi uh, Riskin here from Gush Etzion. And um, okay, some left-leaning guys here, uh, Rabbi Naftali Rotenberg from the Hartmann Institution, and so on and so on. So they put together a statement, a rabbinical statement on Christianity. And they said, okay, and they started now um, various courses and educational issues were because they said, okay, now after we are here in Israel now for um, over 50, 70 years now, for 70 years, Jerusalem, that there will be a new type of Torah, a new type of her, which is also accepted to the Christians. Because now, after 2,000 years of separation, coming back to the land, so now we can sit down and in the future there will be a new Torah. You know, the, first of all, there will be the, the Torah from the Moshiach coming and we have all the new Halakha, which is, uh, you know, it's only possible in the land of Israel. That's another issue, you know. Rabbinical Judaism was um, like Adam Berkowitz um, recently wrote this. It was very helpful to maintain the identity outside the land. But inside the land, there are a lot of issues where you, you can do 
the mitzvot you are not able to do outside so when you're in the land the whole torah experience is a bit different than what you have outside the land okay so now i i remembered what i was saying we were talking uh, but uh, let me continue for let me comment on that as well the the evolution of judaism in the halachic framework today needs to be done by the proper Sanhedrin and by ultra-Orthodox religious Jews, which will take the responsibility to move Judaism forward in a holy manner that continues the legacy and the tradition and the sanctity, the holiness of Judaism as it has developed to this present day. And um, as like we said, we will have our judges back. We pray for this every day, three times a day. Our judges back like we had them in the beginning and our advisors like we had in, in, the, uh, in, uh, in, yeah. in the beginning, a different word. So the advisory board, of course, can be different people from different faiths that are supporting the Sanhedrin and translating the message of the Sanhedrin to the world. But if we are to truly if we are truly to pass the word of Torah out of out of Zion proper, then it is like it's like holding a glass jar that's very, very delicate. It needs to be preserved in its holiness and in its sanctity. And I just feel, just from hearing what you describe, climate change and this kind of talk, it just doesn't sound like the people there are being sensitive enough to Judaism. Now, I want to, okay, one second. I want to just finish what I was saying earlier, that as I told you earlier, if we're going to talk about law, then it's very interesting to find out if a Noahite, for the sake of the terminology that the Jews are used to, a Noahide that's suffering from religious persecution because of his hishtaychut, his connection to the Jewish people and uh, suffering anti-Semitism, whatever, uh, today, modern anti-Semitism, because of his affiliation with the Jewish people, he should probably be able to get some kind of asylum in the state of Israel, the secular state, the Zionist state. As far as Judaism is concerned, just to summarize what we finished, what we started talking about last time, as far as Orthodox, the Torah is concerned, of course, we have a mitzvah to help those in need of asylum. And of course, um, uh, there have always been throughout history, those who have join the Jewish people, just like we know the heir of Rav, even though uh, we have a bad experience with them because they helped the moment there was a there was a minute that Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't there, they helped the Jewish people do idol worship and create the golden calf. So that was pretty bad. And hopefully, obviously, uh, if we are going to allow uh, foreigners into the Jewish fold, we have to do that very carefully so that they do not disrupt the the holiness and the sanctity of the jewish people this is a very very important thing um but of course everything can be done in 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 in, in time um and i just i want to finish closing up that uh, of course we have a lot more to discuss and a lot more to share but uh if i would have to just close the statement it's i would want to say just a few words about this parasha like you started off with bereshit um, Hashem it says Eretz v'shamayim. It says biyom biyom he bar o Eretz v'shamayim. In the day that He created heaven and earth, Rashi says that this means that heaven and earth was created in one day, even though we know that light and darkness was created on the first day, and then the separation of water Yehir Akia. So how could it be that if light and darkness was created on the first day? And then the separation of the waters on the second day, that heaven and earth was created on the same day. So Rashi teaches from this that heaven and earth were created on the first day, 
together with light and darkness. The second day, Hashem separated the waters and so on and so forth. But we, but from this verse that it says, Biyom hibar o, Eretz v'shamayim, that Hashem created on the day that Hashem created heaven and earth, Rashi learns that, that heaven and earth was created on the first day. So besides light and darkness, heaven and earth was also created on the first day. That's just a note. Of, of course, we can go into Parshat Bereshit, creation. And of course, it goes all the way. This parsha goes all the way to Noach. The last verse in this parsha says, and Noach was righteous in the eyes of Hashem. Amen. And of course, we can talk about that as well, but uh, that's what I would want to close with today. Oh, please. Um, um, Joseph, as I said before earlier, you know, I could uh, talk with you for hours and um, I'm really looking forward. So I think, you know, for our first uh, uh, joint uh, recording, it was quite nice. And um, I think that people will understand that, um, well, we are part of, um, you know, of Israel. And it's, you know, I'm looking forward, you know, for a joint, uh, you know, joint party on Mount Zion, to put, put it in this way. So whatever um, you need. Um, so I heard of, uh, first uh, about you from you when you put out your statement that you want to restart and rebuild the sun heaven. And I thought this is something which is absolutely needed. And um, whatever we can do to support this move, we'll do. And I'm really looking forward, you know, because um, the this whole Sanhedrin issue, we are currently in a state of uh, um, in a judicial bankruptcy. In a judicial bankruptcy. So as we currently uh, know uh, what we have currently going on in the United States, in Germany, we have issue with our uh, constitutional courts. Um, you have in Israel, of course, Israeli high court, like completely independent from anything else. They're doing politics. OK, so there is a really uh, the court system and the judicial system is bankrupt. And we need we need we need a court where issues are dealt with on a biblical uh, on a biblical ground which is currently not available and this is why i think this is the most and pressing issue in this time to really build up the sanhedrin because of all the involved parties because of all the involved parties because you know the american president puts his hand on the bible when he swears okay this president now is a roman catholic all right so, and we know that a lot of courts are, you know, paid for by, um, okay, I don't want to name names now, you know, but paid for by certain activists, okay, to, to bring judgments, which are absolutely anti-Torah. And I think that a lot of people who are crying out for justice and truth and so on and so on, that they will find an answer when the sun had been. So this is why I'm absolutely looking forward to that one. And um, to all the upcoming conversations we have, you know, to make the world a better place and to bring back the kingdom to Zion. Uh, this is our task, and I'm really looking forward to do that. So this would be my thank you so much, Wolf, and I, I am I am blessed and so happy to be um, uh, working with your organization, of course. Um, studying Torah and, of course, establishing the Sanhedrin, just like we said, Yaakov was bringing justice in his day, in his way. And uh, this is what we are doing today as well. Pushing for the Sanhedrin is the next, is the, is the modern step of pushing Hashem's light into this world. Tov tzedek v'yosher, goodness, righteous, uh, righteousness, and straightforwardness. And uh, this is truly what the world is, uh, needs. Like you said, the, the current justice system is in free fall. The situation is, is, is uh, very, very, very unstable. And, um, and, and of course, many of our um, um, uh, respected um, members in your organization and in mine have, have devoted our free time, like, you know, our, our, our sports time to bring Mashiach 
and uh, we all have our own uh, geula pratit, our own personal redemption that we want to see justice in. And this is also pushing us to work together so that hopefully our children will have uh, more justice and, and, and be in a safer world. Be'ezrat Hashem. Amen. Thank you, Yossi. So I will click here the button and stop.